Movie meanders. Mutiny. The Bounty. And Go Native Cinema. I've always been quite fascinated by Mutiny on the Bounty. Most of you probably know what it is. 1789, Captain Bly, Fletcher Christian, and how they all went to Tahiti. And Fletcher Christian and some of the crew kind of went native, fell in love. The Tahitian women were beautiful. The country was like a paradise, warm, food everywhere, fish in the sea, coconuts in the trees, bananas. Life was easy. And the men had a long time on that island, about six months. And I think that's what really caused the mutiny. Okay, Bly was a bit of a disciplinarian, but weren't they all? I mean, how many sea captains of that period were nice guys, you know? Discipline was very strict. I think they had too long on that island and I think they just went native. And this gets me thinking. Fascinated by the story of the bounty and men going native, I decided to have a look back at cinema history and see if there's other stories like that. And the first thing that struck me was Lawrence of Arabia, the great 1962 Peter O'Toole film, where T.E. Lawrence, the story is based on the real guy, T.E. Lawrence, World War I, goes to Arabia, joins up with the Bedouin, and fights against the Turks with them to try to gain them independence. And over the course of time that he's there, he adopts their style of dress, and in many ways, their style of culture too. Then there's Apocalypse Now. Based on the book, The Heart of Darkness, where a guy goes up the river, and as he goes up the river, civilization drops away and drops away, and eventually he comes across Colonel Kurtz. Actually, his mission in the movie is to kill Colonel Kurtz. And Colonel Kurtz is living in the middle of the jungle with a ragtag army that kind of worship him like a god. And he's gone completely native, maybe more than native. He's become the jungle with all its cruelty. He is the jungle and he understands that they'll never win that Vietnam War if they play it the civilized way. You've got to adopt the rules of the jungle. Then there's Farewell to the King, 1989, Nick Nolte, where some guys, Americans, are escaping from the Japanese who are taking over the Philippines where they're based and they get in a little boat and they manage to find an island somewhere. His friends get killed by a Japanese patrol, but Nick Nolte gets into the jungle and hooks up with some native people there, and he becomes their king. Now, why does he become their king? That You know, he's white, he's got these strange blue eyes, um, he got a gun he knows how to use so these people begin to worship him but he's not a kind of king that exploits this he really adopts their ways of life it's also based on some kind of true story although not that closely based I think and anyway his people begin to help the British and Americans fight the Japanese how about a film for 1970, Little Big Man with Dustin Hoffman, where he's brought up with a tribe of Indians, a white kid brought up with a tribe of Indians after his parents are killed. And how about Soldier Blue? Uh, Candice Bergman, 1970, was regarded as a very controversial film. Both these films, Little Big Man, Soldier Blue, were called revisionist westerns because the people involved 
adopted a lot of Indian customs and traditions and even when they were not with them anymore or they were released or they escaped they still had huge sympathy for that way of life and those people and really saw how that kind of culture was being destroyed willfully by the Western spirit. Dances with Wolves, Kevin Costner. Again, it's not my favorite film, but a very similar go native kind of movie where this kind of Western civilization and culture kind of falls away from people once they're exposed to ancient ways of living to I call it primitive ways of living, but I, I think the word primitive has been misused. The word primitive seems to suggest simplicity and backwardness, but to me, it doesn't actually mean that. It just means people in the state of nature living as they had lived maybe for hundreds of thousands of years. It's not simplistic. There's Walkabout with Jenny Agatha when she was quite young. She always had this weird fan thing going on, even though she was kind of underage. I don't know when she made walk, Walkabout if she was underage. She was famous for the railway children. A lot of people very obsessed with Jenny Agatha. Not me, but an American werewolf in London some years later. She's great in that as the nurse. Anyway, walk about two kids get kind of lost or separated in the Australian outback and a young Aboriginal guy doing his kind of walk about his, what would you call it, his initiation where you go out on your own and survive comes across him and he leads them back to safety bit by bit but he falls in love with Agatha. She doesn't seem to care about him and in the end her rejection of him causes him to hang himself in a tree and she still doesn't seem to care until right at the end when we see her with her husband or fiance in the future in a civilized kind of city and he's talking about how they're going to have this and how they're going to have that material stuff and she just flashes back to swimming naked in the billabong and you can see in her eyes that she had gone native but didn't even know until later. How about The Beach, the famous uh, film with Leonardo DiCaprio? Is that really going native? It's seeking, they're seeking some kind of utopia in the middle of nowhere, but they're not really integrating with the locals, are they? They're, they're trying to set up their own utopia far away from civilization, get back to basics. But they're not really going native in the sense of adopting the indigenous culture. They're creating their own culture. But it is going native to a certain extent. You know, Paul Gauguin, the famous painter who hung out with Van Gogh, he was very famous for, this is 19th century, for going to Tahiti and painting the women and finding his own kind of paradise, his own kind of utopia. There's different ideas about how that worked out. Some say he gave all the women syphilis. Some say they gave him syphilis. Some say he never had syphilis at all. It was just eczema. But the, he epitomizes this kind of industrial, pre-industrial, post-industrial, colonial, idea that shedding materiality and getting back to basics is a really great thing. It's there in communism, isn't it? The idea of prehistoric communism, primitive communism as they called it, and then going through the peasantry, the feudal system and the industrial system and slowly reaching a point where you go back to where you started, although now you have all the material benefits that prehistoric, primitive, traditional people, call them what you want, never had. I could mention Avatar here. Avatar's a, a, a similar idea, isn't it? Although it's a fantasy. There's films by the great Werner Herzog, Aguirre, 
the wrath of God, Fitzcarraldo, all taking place in the South American jungle with men either looking for El Dorado or trying to set up their own opera house on a boat and bring civilization into the jungle, but all becoming victims of that jungle. I don't know if in both those films, the great Klaus Kinski acting in both of them really goes native. I think he, he rejects that. And he, because he rejects that and he's in the middle of that, it all goes wrong for him. How about the original Castaway film, before Tom Hanks, the one with Oliver Reed in it and Amanda Donoghue? What was that, 1986, based on a true story of a guy who wants to go to a desert island and live there without the trappings of technology? And uh, a woman asks, he asks in a newspaper for a woman to go with him and a woman answers and they set off together. Is that really going native? Again, they're not really integrating with the local people. They're just shedding the armor and the skin of civilization. I'll talk about this film again in the future because I need to do a desert island one. This going native and being stuck on a desert island either because you're shipwrecked or stranded or because you choose to are slightly different topics. Let's go back to The Bounty. It's a beautiful film. Got a great cast. I think you can recognize who's in it if you look at the pictures I've taken here. But if you think of these men's lives back in Georgian England how squalid it would have been for most of them. Squalid and in a way then the discipline of the ship very regimented. The water back home would give you cholera and diarrhea and typhus and God knows what. What was there to go back to? Although many of the ship's crew did return. They went off with Bly when he was sent off in a boat on his own just with his loyal crew and even others there was no room on the boat stayed loyal and waited in Tahiti. Why did those men not go native? Why just half the crew go native? I think maybe because those other men had families back home. I think that is the thing and I think that the mutiny happened because the men were on the island too long and they literally fell in love with the women and they fell in love with the lifestyle. And if he hadn't been Bly as a captain, the same thing would have happened. They would have deserted ship or taken the ship. They ended up in Pitcairn Island, which was had been uncharted. Yeah, no, it had been charted, but in the wrong place. And they set up a colony there, which went all completely tits up and by the time they were found years later only one mutineer was left some of the women a lot of children that spoke English and those descendants are still there today not without their own troubles I might add so that's my meander through um, what I call go native cinema have a look into it yourself some of the films mentioned are absolutely brilliant um, I went native myself although like the man who would be king although I didn't become a king but I did maintain that difference I, I never fully integrated and yet I'm nowhere near a bloody king but that's another great film um, that I mentioned there or the quiet American Who's in The Quiet American? Oh, I can't remember who's in it. Brendan Fraser and Michael Caine. Brilliant movie. 2003, well worth watching. Where Michael Caine's living in Vietnam. Before the war with the Americans, but it's going on with the French. He's a newspaper guy. And he falls in love with the culture and falls in love with the women. These exotic women like in Tahiti but he doesn't really integrate with it and the American Brendan Fraser who comes over 
pretending to be interested, but really he's a CIA man stirring up trouble. He doesn't really integrate either. So is this going native? Is e are either of those really going native? I don't know, but they're absorbed by the culture. And I think sometimes the culture, when you're far away from home, just absorbs you bit by bit and slowly you change. Although since the days of Gauguin or the mutineers on the bounty, civilization has gotten everywhere and it has its advantages. That's why it's so successful. But it has its disadvantages because we just don't seem to be able to shed our skins. I mean, is there anywhere that doesn't have a McDonald's left? You know, where I live in this little tropical island, 20 years ago, there were no motorbikes, there were no cars here. There were oxen, there were bicycles. And now you can't move for cars and tricycles and buses and God knows what. And burger joints open everywhere. There's a kind of monoculture spread around the world, but there's still enough difference. There's still enough difference to notice. Anyway, that's me done. Um, thanks for listening and watching, and uh, I'll see you about.